Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and today it is all about the Deckware 25th Anniversary Amplifier. It's actually an integrated amplifier. Now, 25 years, Deckware has been in business for 25 years, and their very first product was called the Zen Trio. It's been in continuous production for 25 years with, I think, six or seven revisions along the way. And I reviewed that amplifier, the Zen Trio, the current version, back in July. And I was head over heels in love with that amplifier. I'll link to it, of course. But as, we were, as I was working on that review, I was talking to Steve Deckert and he was telling me that he made this super duper version, the, the subject of today's review, the 25th anniversary amp, basically as an anniversary present to himself. He said, I want to take my basic amplifier that I've been making for 25 years and just soup it up. I want to take it to the limit. I want to make it as good as I can. I don't want to think about how much it's going to cost because I'm not going to sell it. I'm just doing this as a, as a present to myself. So that's what he did. He made this amplifier. And yes, obviously, he decided to put it in production. Uh, it is $3,295. And well, I'm going to get into the differences of how it sounded, but let's just talk a little bit about what makes it the 25th anniversary edition. First of all, you can see it's a bit larger. It has a lot more tubes in it, as you can plainly see. Uh, there's two voltage regulators, uh, which are pretty special. Uh, it's just an all-out attempt. So the main difference between the $995 version and the $3295 version is essentially power supply. Because these two amplifiers definitely share a certain uh, sonic signature, but the 25th anniversary amp is significantly more uh, transparent, alive, dimensional, in every way better in terms of its, its tube qualities. Now, I've talked a lot about I like tube amplifiers and tube preamplifiers that sound like tube electronics. I don't need a, sol I don't need a tube amplifier to sound exactly like a solid state because then just buy a solid state. But this amplifier, actually both versions, but especially the 25th anniversary, gets that balance just right of having tube qualities in terms of its tone, dimensionality, that sort of thing, and still being a very transparent device. That transparent meaning you're hearing back through time to the original recording session, if if that's actually in the recording, because a lot of recordings are so screwed around with there is nothing left of the original session. But I don't want to get off on that track. Basically, it is a transparent amplifier, but has oodles, oodles of tube uh, wonderfulness in the sound. So now I'm going to show you a picture of both amplifiers side by side. So you can see the 25th anniversary is, is longer uh, because it has more tubes in it. Um, and it has that beautiful African paddock wood base. It feels more like a high-end luxury product. Now, they're both, well, integrated amplifiers because they both have volume controls, meaning you don't need to use a preamp with either amplifier. So I use both of these as power amplifiers with my Pass Labs XP30 as a preamp. So the, the front end was my normal front end, and both of these amps at different times were just used as power amps. They're both very small amplifiers, as you can see side by side. The bigger one, the 25th anniversary, is 8 inches wide and 15.5 inches deep. That's pretty small as, as power amplifiers go. Now, small, there's a key word. I didn't mention the power rating. Now, the power rating on both of these amplifiers, despite the fact that the 25th anniversary is more than three times the price, is exactly the same for both amps. They, they both put out... 2.3 watts per channel. I made a big deal about 2.3 watts when I reviewed the Zen Triad in July because with any with a speaker with any reasonable sensitivity they can play these 2.3 watts they can play surprisingly loud. Now not rock the house party crazy time loud no <laughs> not that loud but loud enough I mean, and with high sensitivity speakers like my Klipsch Cornwall 4s, 
I was playing them over 100 dB with either of these amplifiers. So with high sensitivity speakers, they play loud. And with average sensitivity speakers, meaning in the mid 90s, they can play satisfyingly loud. So don't underestimate what 2.3 watts can do. But having said that, I would not call these amps brawny or they're gonna you know, shake the foundations of your house or anything. If you, if you need that, then <laughs> no, 2.3 watts or 23 watts or 100 watts, probably not gonna, not gonna cut it for you. So, so far so good, right? But here's the really cool part about the way Deckware handles this amplifier. Now they know that a lot of customers are not gonna go out and do any tube rolling, any tube swapping, right? So the way they sell the amp is they pack the tubes in this Pelican case, which I'm showing you right now. But there's more tubes in that case than you'll actually use. But there's double sets of the 6P15 EVs, right? So you get two sets of those, two sets of 6DJ7 input tubes, two sets of the voltage regulator tubes. So you can be tube rolling without any of the hassles associated with tube rolling. These are all carefully selected by Deckware to give you different flavors of sound. You change a tube, you change the sound. You can also change the sound by changing the bias setting for the input tube, that little tube right in the front. So there's a high, low uh, switch right in front of that tube. You can change it while you're listening to music. You don't have to turn off the amp to change it. And one position is a little uh, more laid back. The other one is a little more forward. Uh, you can change the sound by changing the impedance on the, tra on the output transformers from low to high. There's one for each channel. Uh, so you can listen in multiple ways. You can get multiple sound signatures. Now, if that's too much information, you don't want to diddle around with switches and mess around. Don't. Just <laughs> open up the box, p pick one, <laughs> one set, set them in and live happily ever after. You don't, you don't have to, no one's forcing you to, but part of the fun of living with any tube amplifier, and certainly this one, because he's made it so easy, is changing the tubes and changing the sound. So if you want to change it, it's really easy to do. If you don't want to change it, just plug in a set of tubes, turn that puppy up, and enjoy. I'm going to do a, a quick rundown of the features of the 25th anniversary amp. It's a class A zero feedback design. There are no circuit boards. It is all point to point wiring. Has a lifetime warranty on the amplifier, not on the tubes. Uh, it is handcrafted in East Peoria, Illinois. Uh, most of the parts are U.S. sourced. I mean, that's a pretty impressive list. And by the way, almost all of those features that I just mentioned are true of all deckware amplifiers. The speakers. Well, what speakers did I use for this review? I used a few, but the main speaker for most of my listening time were the Klipsch Cornwall 4s. Very high sensitivity speaker, big 15-inch woofer, big horns. Yeah. So I got truth. I got big helpings of truth and beauty and soul. It just sounded, well, to use that word, musical. In ways that solid state amplifiers, which are more neutral, more accurate, more clear cut, let's put it that way, than tube amplifiers can be. But in terms of just indulging, it's an indulgence to live with this sound. That's what I'm saying. I switched over to a Past Labs XA25 there's no doubt about it. Comparing the, the deckware to the XA25, that amp had more slam, more power, more guts on the bottom, bigger dynamics, all of that stuff, which is the brute force part, I'd say. Yeah, no problem. And it was 25 watts a channel, so more than 10 times as powerful. Yeah, and you could feel the difference. But when I'm listening to, you know, modern jazz quartet, when I'm listening to Brian Eno's ambient albums, when I'm listening to music that doesn't require slam and power and all that stuff, yeah, I'm hearing more soul. I'm hearing what musicians are putting into their sound, more of an expression of how they're playing. I just feel that connection more with a tube amplifier. 
Now I have to do a little side trip, a quick little side trip, because I know the way some of you guys think that I just reviewed the Amp Camp Amp, the Nelson Pass designed 8 watts per channel kit amplifier. It's $327 and it's only 8 watts. So how did that 8 watt amplifier compare to the deckware? Well, it was definitely more solid state. It was totally threadbare. It was cooler. It was less, <laughs> sorry, less musical. Uh, but you know, when I just when I don't compare the 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 amp camp amp to other amplifiers, it is actually a very very satisfying solid state amplifier. But when compared to an amplifier like this, which is about pulling that 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 soul from the from the music that human quality yeah I'm sorry there's no contest the deckware was miles ahead of the amp camp amp but hey if you got $327 and you want to have a killer little amplifier <laughs> the amp camp amp is definitely the way to go if if you have speakers that are relatively easy to drive and you don't listen loud so uh, you know 8 watts per channel 2.3 watts per channel in either case n neither one is going to be a party animal just <laughs> let's table that thought but when it came time to do the the face off so to speak between the plain vanilla Zen triode $995 amplifier versus this one the 25th anniversary for three times the price I I was I really was kind of on, on the edge of my seat when I did this one because I wasn't really sure what to expect. I so love the, the plain Zen triode amplifier. How would they sound different? Well, okay, so the Zen triode sounds tubey, rich, warm, sweet, just like it wants, the sound is hugging you. There you go. I used that before, but I have to use it again. It just, the sound with the right speaker, with the right sensitivity, it just, sounds beautiful it really really does and when you switch over to the 25th anniversary amp there's there's obviously a common family sound to them but the 25th anniversary amp is more vivid it's more uh, there the, the you can hear the recording venue more clearly that low level detail clarity just makes everything sound more, well, dimensional, right? That, that's what clar that kind of clarity gives you, assuming it's in the recording, because a lot of recordings, there's no dimensionality. But with a good recording, good old jazz, or an audio file from Chesky or MA, an audio file recording from Chesky or MA, yeah, there's more there there. There's more substance to the sound with the 25th anniversary amp. So it doesn't sound more powerful. It's not, it's not really more powerful, but it is more visceral to say in that it just has more get up and go. It has higher energy than the standard Zen triad, but it's still 2.3 watts for both amps. I played this Ricky Lee Jones album called The Devil You Know. And it's a, it's a it's a polarizing record because it's so sparsely arranged. It's not a lot of production, a lot of instruments crowding it. It's really Ricky Lee and just her voice is front and center, and she's singing these songs that you know, and I'll list some of them here, uh, at very slow tempo. So she's just luxuriating in each tune, which bugs a lot of people. But I think it's great. I think to just take these very familiar songs and make them, uh, just do them a very different way. You just hear more into the lyrics. I just love that she, she was brave enough to take this approach, which is gonna turn off a lot of people, but for the people who got it, one of them which would be me, I think it's really, really cool. And it's a really great sounding recording uh, for a mainstream pop recording. It's not an audiophile recording, but it is extremely dynamic. And on the Cornwall 4s, it was one of those pin me back in my chairs kind of albums, which is, you know, nice. <laughs> it's not so nice when that happens. And then that led to, I think, their, the Stones' last record with Bill Mime, I think so, Emotional Rescue. And the tune itself, Emotional Rescue, is kind of a, a disco kind of thing, I think. I think that's what you classify that music. And it, you know what, even at that late stage, which is, uh, you know, mid-1980s, they still had it. 
they still had that Stones character. They weren't like really old guys. They were still relatively young, and they and they took and they kicked butt. It was fun, and yeah, those two point three watts over the, over the corn walls, good times, definitely good times. So there you have it, the Deckware twenty fifth anniversary amplifier, very very special, very special, and uh, wow. I love my job. I really do. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Right now coming to you four days a week, basically every other day if you're keeping score. Uh, if you like what I do, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're closing in. We're at 144,000, almost 145,000 subscribers now. Closing in on 150 probably by the end of this month, I'm hoping. Um, you should also check out the Patreon, which can be found at P A T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac, and I will link to that below. And I will link to Deckware's various pages below as well. Um, and by the way, for the Patreon, you can now make payment in dollars, pounds, or euros if that if that helps. But while you're here, check out the playlist. There are playlists, uh, you know, maybe I'll put some up over there. I think yeah, over there for playlists for speak reviews and electronics reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews. And of course, interviews. And I do have an interview with Steve Deckert, the man himself. And I will link to that as well over there. I think at last, my work is at last complete. So thank you again for watching. And I really do. Hope to see you back here again in the immediate future. <laughs> anyway, see you very soon. Bye-bye.